I'd ask everyone present to please rise and repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have with us today to give our invocation the Reverend Peter Young from Mother Teresa Community in Albany. Reverend. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Ever a living God, we gather today in this beautiful May, middle of May day, with the sunshine here in the Senate chamber as members representing our constituents to provide leadership for our New York State citizens. Let your spirit enlighten our minds and guide our actions that we may be united in love and bring to fulfillment the work of government for the greater honor and glory of our citizens and of you, O Lord. Amen. May we stand at ease for a moment, please? So we'll stand at ease. Can we now reading, continue? Reading of the journal. In Senate Tuesday, May 10th, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Monday, May 9th, was read and approved on motion. Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal stands approved as read. Presentations of petitions, messages from the Assembly. Secretary will read. On page 16, Senator Martins moved to discharge the Committee on Rules, Assembly Bill Number 9174A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill. 6387B, third reading calendar 18. On page 39, Senator Bonasek moved to discharge from the Committee on Judiciary, Assembly Bill Number 9572, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7254, third reading calendar 670. So ordered. Messages from the Governor. Ports of Standing Committees, Ports of Select Committees, Communications and Reports from State Officers, Motions and Resolutions. Senator DeFrancisco? Uh, on page 39, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 675, Senate print 7306 by Senator Hannon, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. On page 31, I offer the following amendments to calendar 530, uh, Senate print 6803, and ask that said bill, and that's by Senator Serino, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Uh, can we now take up the non-controversial reading of the calendar? The Secretary will read. Calendar number 18 by Member of the Assembly Blake, Assembly Print 9174A, an act amend the state finance law. Second. Read the last section. Section 2 is that should take effect on the 365th day after it shall become law. Call the roll. Adabo Flynn and Klein Stewart Cousins Young, ayes 44. Bill is passed. Calendar number 236 by Senator Funky, Senator Print 6265, and I commend a general municipal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. 
Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Ayes 44. Bill is passed. Calendar number 283 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 6466A, and act amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect on the 180th day. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Ayes 44. Bill is passed. Calendar number 446 by Senator Farley, Senate Print 2447D, an act amending retirement social security law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Ayes 46. Bill is passed. Calendar number 508 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 6691A, an act amending criminal procedure law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Now it's the result. In relation to calendar 508, those recorded the negative are Senators DeLon, Hoyleman, Kruger, Perkins, Persaud, Rivera, and Squadron. Ayes 39, nays 7. Bill is passed. Calendar number 509 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 6945, enact amend the criminal procedure law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Now the results. In relation to calendar 509, those recorded in the negative are Senators DeLon, Hassel Thompson, Kruger, Perkins, Persaud, and Rivera. Ayes 42, nay 6. Bill is passed. Calendar number 656 by Senator Galavan, Senate Print 6669, Act Amendment Vehicle and Traffic Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Senator Kruger? I, Mr. President, I apologize. Is this 656 or 657? Six. Six. I'm one ahead of myself. I'll be raising my hand in a little while. Thank you. Announce the result. Ayes 48. Bill is passed. Calendar number 657 by Senator Funky, Senate Print 6748A, Enact Amendment the Vehicle and Traffic Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 60th day. Senator Funky. Nope. Call the roll. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Senator Funky to explain his vote. Bill helps deliver a measure of justice for one of my constituents. His name is Ed O'Brien. Ed's son Kane was a Marine sergeant who served two tours in Iraq and was decorated for valor for fighting hand to hand and street to street in Fallujah. This brave Marine came home a hero, settled down in Honeyoy Falls in my district, went back to school, had a son, and pursued a law degree and a career in law enforcement. On April 10th, 2011, Cade was riding his motorcycle in Menden Ponds Park when he was struck and critically injured by an inattentive driver who failed to properly yield the right of way. He died the very next day. The driver whose actions led to Cade's death received only a $35 fine for failure to yield the right of way. $35 for someone's life. Not fair, not right. Kate's father, Ed, came to me to work on a solution, but not out of a spirit of vengeance or anger. He only wanted to raise awareness on this issue and educate drivers about it. This bill provides that anybody who kills or seriously injures another while failing to obey any traffic law will be guilty of a misdemeanor with a penalty of up to 30 days in jail or a fine of at least $300. And it requires any driver involved in one of these incidents complete a safety course to try to ensure that in this world of distracted driving today they pay attention so that we hopefully will never make those kinds of mistakes again. Ed O'Brien told me recently that he's been diagnosed with cancer and so he is facing another tough fight ahead. It's my hope today that he will find some measure of comfort when we deliver this legislation in the name of his son Sergeant Kate O'Brien. Mr. President, I vote aye. 
I urge my colleagues to join me. Thank you. Senator Funke to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to explain my vote no. I appreciate very much Senator Funke's um, story with his constituent, and I'm not opposed to his bill based on the fact that he is creating a model of $300 more, even up to 30 days in jail. I actually don't think it goes for, far enough. And actually, if it were to become law, it would have a lesser penalty or fine than law we already have on the book, section 1146 of the Rules of the Road, which when a vehicle, if it was to hit a pedestrian or a bicyclist, actually could result in a higher misdemeanor charge and a fine of up to $1,000 with the possibility of um, police moving it into negligence category. So my vote no is not a lack of respect or concern for the story Senator Funky told, but rather um, that I actually think we have stronger statute and that what Senator Funky might wish to do is to perhaps broaden the definitions within that statute to cover the situation as he just told that story, but not to end up with two sets of law in New York State for similar or even the same situation where existing law is actually stronger um, than this law would provide for. And so that is my reason for voting no, Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Kruger to be recorded in the negative. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise and Senator um, Kruger has already explained the concerns that I have with the bill. They're identical, but I just wanted to express to Senator Funky that while I will be voting no, I think that the, the bill in and of itself is not sufficient for, um, for, the, for the action um, that this bill describes, and I would like to work with him and others to uh, make it stronger, because I think we already have in law that which will cover the concerns that are raised in this bill. I will be voting no. Senator Hassel Thompson to be recorded in the negative. Announce the result. In relation to calendar 657, those recorded in the negative are Senators DeLon, Hassel Thompson, Kruger, and Perkins. Ayes 49, nays 4. Bill is passed. Calendar number 670 by member of the Assembly Braunstein, Assembly Print 9572, Enactment of the Circuit's Court Procedure Act. La last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flanagan, inclines to her cousin Jung. Ayes 53. Bill is passed. Calendar number 683 by Senator Avella, Senate Print 1766, Enactment of the Executive Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flanagan, inclines to her cousin Jung. Senator Avella. My colleagues to support this bill, which would officially commemorate January 13th as Korean American Day each and every year. In 1902, 56 men, 26, 21 women, and 25 children left Korea to immigrate to the United States. Since then, the Korean American population has prospered, has become part of the culture of this country and of this state. In uh, 2010, the census estimated that there's 153,000 Korean Americans in New York State. Congress has already designated this day as Korean American Day. Other states and municipalities have done it. Um, I think it's only appropriate that New York State do it as well. I urge my colleagues to support this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Avella to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the result. Ayes 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 686 by Senator Griffo, Senate Print 2727A, Enactment of Tax Law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flanagan inclines to her cousin Jung. Ayes 53, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. Bill is passed. Calendar number 688 by Senator Young, Senate Print 3071A, Enactment of the Executive Law. Last section. Section 16, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo Flanagan inclines to her cousin Jung. Senator Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to explain my vote no on this bill. I appreciate and respect the sponsor's desire to address the issues of safety within these facilities for the workers, 
But I am very concerned that the way this bill is written, one, it potentially violates federal HIPAA law uh, requiring um, patient confidentiality of health and mental health records, the way it would broaden the definition of anyone and everyone within a facility having the right to all those records. Two, it has an estimated cost um, annually of approximately $10 million, and therefore I feel that this should be dealt with within the context of the agency budget at budget time. And three, it actually, as I understand it, calls for a scenario that would have a one-to-one -one staffing ratio, uh, one staff to one resident within these facilities. I don't really know any other parallel um, ratio in our criminal justice or youth um, juvenile justice system, and I think that that is also a serious precedent that should be explored within the context of the budget of OCFS and its facilities. And for all those reasons, I need to vote no. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Kruger to be recorded in the negative. Announce the result. Relation to calendar 688, those recorded in the negative are Senators DeLine, Kruger, Perkins, and Persaud. Ayes 50, nays 4. Bill is passed. Calendar number 690 by Senator Lanza, Senator from 4615A, enactment of tax law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 699 by Senator Ritchie, Senator from 6606, enactment of general city law. Last section. Section 10, this act should take effect on the 1st of July. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 55. Bill is passed. Calendar number 708 by Senator Galavan, Senator Print 431, enactment of public officer's law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 55. Bill is passed. Calendar number 712 by Senator Murphy, Senator Print 2950, enactment of corrections law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 180th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 55. Bill is passed. In relation to calendar 712. Ayes 54, nays 1. Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. Bill is passed. Calend calendar number 713 by Senator Lanza, Senator from 4511, enactment of the corrections law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Ayes 53, nays 2, Senators Hassel Thompson and Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Senator DeFrancisco, that completes the reading of the non controversial calendar. Uh, yes, uh, at the conclusion of session, not now, because we got more business. At the conclusion of session, there'll be a, uh, an immediate meeting of the Banking Committee, and I'm not going to tell you where yet so you don't leave, because we have some important business to contend with here before that. And what I'd now like to do, if you would please, is to please take up previously adopted resolution 4427, read its in entirety, and then call on me, please. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 4427 by Senator DeFrancisco, honoring Kayla McKeon upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the 2016 Champion of Change Self Advocate of the Year Award by National Down Syndrome Society. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to honor and recognize those dedicated and talented individuals within our midst who have and continue to inspire their communities through their tireless efforts and their outstanding professional and personal accomplishments. And we have a little order in the House, please. Thank you. Secretary will continue. And whereas, attendant to such concern and in full accord with its long-standing traditions, this legislative body is hereby justly proud to honor Kayla McKeon upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the 2016 Champion of Change Self-Advocate of the Year Award by the National Down Syndrome Society to be celebrated at an award ceremony in Washington, D.C. on April 11, 2016. And whereas, Kayla McKeon of Cicero, New York, is a motivational speaker and community advocate with Down syndrome, whose positive attitude has inspired countless others to reach their highest potential. And whereas, as, as a motivational speaker, Kayla McKeon has delivered speeches at various venues, such as public schools and universities throughout central New York and the entire state of New York. 
In addition, she has conducted several media interviews to help raise community awareness about Down syndrome. And whereas, through her dedicated and enthusiastic advocacy, Kayla McKeon has proudly served as a strong voice for others with Down syndrome. And whereas, in 2015, Kayla McKeon lobbied state legislators to help pass New York Achieving a Better Life Experience, New York ABLE Act, which has since been signed into law by Governor Andrew M. Cuomo, the New York ABLE Act will allow people with disabilities and their families to set up separate tax-exempt savings accounts to help them retain more of their own money. And whereas, Kayla McKeon met with state lawmakers and used social media and speaking engagements to help gain increased support for the New York ABLE Act. And whereas, an accomplished athlete, Kayla McKeon has competed in a variety of Special Olympic events, including floor hockey, track and field, and bocce since she was 13 years old on both the state and national level. And whereas, in June of 2011, Kayla McKeon became a World Games athlete proudly representing the United States and the state of New York in Athens, Greece, and ultimately brought home a silver and bronze medal in bocce. And whereas an enthusiastic worker, Kayla McKeon is employed at Gigi's Playhouse in Syracuse, New York, and serves as an intern at Congressman Jack, or John Katko's office. This incredible young woman also holds the position of Special Olympic Congressional Ambassador and emissary of the Shriver Global Messenger Program. And whereas, in addition, Kayla McKeon volunteers her time and energies at numerous community organizations, such as the YMCA, and is pursuing her associate's degree at both Onondaga Community and Lemoyne Colleges. And whereas, it is sent to this legislative body that those who enhance the well-being and vitality of their community have shown a long and sustained commitment to excellence, certainly have earned the recognition and applause of all citizens of this great empire state. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pause and hereby honor and recognize Kayla McKeon upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the 2016 Champion of Change Self-Advocate of the Year Award by the National Down Syndrome Society, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to Kayla McKeon. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, Kayla and her parents are here on the Senate floor over by the, she's raising her hand. She's very, very shy, very shy. Kayla, would you stand up, please? Thank you. I really appreciate that applause because she definitely deserves it. She's the 2016 Champion of Change, Self-Advocate of the Year, uh, uh, named that by this national, that's National Down Syndrome Society. Uh, I've known uh, Kayla for a few years. I met her at Gigi's Playhouse, a place where she works. And uh, she immediately came up to me and started lobbying me. Immediately. She, did, she said hello, I think but immediately began lobbying me on the New York ABLE Act, which she was very instrumental in getting my attention and many, many other people's attention. She has participated in the Special Olympics. She's an intern at a congressman's office. I don't know where she gets all this time, but I know she's definitely got the energy. And I thought it was uh, extremely important for us to honor her today as a national leader and, of course, this is no surprise. She's from central New York. She's from our district. And she's doing a wonderful job. So Kayla, thank you for your service. And thank you for being a fine ambassador for the entire country. Thank you. Senator Valeski. Thank you, Mr. President. I just uh, want to add for the record that I'm pleased to join Senator DeFrancisco in sponsoring this resolution, co-sponsoring the resolution, and welcoming Kayla and her parents here. And uh, as Senator DeFrancisco said, uh, Kayla takes, uh, I think we can safely say that Kayla has taken lobbying to new heights. Um, she was passionate about uh, her cause. Uh, I have, obviously, sitting right next to me here, Senator Carlucci, who was the lead sponsor last year. 
of the ABLE Act, and Kayla identified an issue that was important to her and so many people like her across the state of New York, and she chose to do something about it. Instead of waiting for someone else to take the lead, she took the lead herself. And I think each and every one of us as senators in this chamber have constituents who uh, exemplify the best of New Yorkers and have done uh, the kind of thing that Kayla has done um, in so many areas. So we're so pleased that she and her parents are here in Albany today and uh, enjoying the proceedings of the House. And uh, Kayla, I want to thank you for your continued advocacy about issues that matter to you and so many uh, across New York State. Thank you and welcome. Kayla, the Senate welcomes you and your parents to, to the chamber. We extend all the privileges and courtesies of the House to you. Congratulations. Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, yes. Um, Senator Flanagan hands up the following committee assignments. Do you have them at the desk? They are at the desk. Uh, thank you very much. The assignments are accepted and will be filed in the journal. Now if you take up previously adopted resolution 3276 by Senator Amador, uh, read the title only and call on Senator Am Amador if you would please. Very well. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 3276 by Senator Amador. Congratulating the Shalman High School Girls Varsity Soccer Team Coach Alana Resu upon the occasion of capturing the 2015 New York State Class B Championship. Senator Amador. Well, thank you, President, and I want to congratulate and welcome a very special team, a group of young ladies who are state champions, Class B women's soccer team of Shalmont High School that has I think achieved something that's extraordinary, and that is within four years to be the state champions uh, two times is quite an accomplishment for our school. And this is a very important to me and special because it's my alma mater. And so as I have went, gone to school and some of my classmates are now the, the uh, moms and dads of the team players on this team, it's special for me to see this great accomplishment of beautiful young ladies who have a lot of dreams, aspirations to be future leaders and to do what is so great in the town of Rotterdam, the nice place to live as we all call it, to really uh, be about family and to study hard and to dream big. Congratulate all of you on a job well done, hard work and to beating my colleague, Senator Ort's high school team, <laughs> the Wilson High School uh, team. Thank you for that. Congratulations and to, the, to the coach. You've done a job well done. Welcome. Girls, the Senate welcomes you, congratulates you on your state champion victory, and gives you all the courtesies and privileges of the House. Thank you for being here. Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We have one other resolution uh, previously adopted. That's uh, Resolution 4878 by Senator Comrie. Could you please read it in its entirety and then call on Senator Comrie? Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 4878 by Senator Comrie. Congratulating Kelly Hiles upon the occasion of receiving an acceptance letter from all 21 colleges and universities across the United States to which she applied. Whereas, to the sense of this legislative body to recognize the outstanding achievements in education displayed by the great citizens of New York. And whereas, Kelly Hiles, through her diligence and dedication to her education, has also received the prestigious honor of being accepted to all eight Ivy League schools located across the country with full scholarships. Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell University, Dartmouth College, Harvard University, Princeton University, and the University of Pennsylvania. And whereas Kylie Hughes Hiles' accomplishments are reflective of the dedicated effort to achieving academic success at a higher level after moving to the United States from Guyana in September 2009. And whereas Kylie, Kelly Hiles is a 2012 graduated valedictorian at IS 292 
It is this year's valedictorian at Mass Science and Engineering High School at City College of New York. And whereas Kelly Hiles co-founded the Black Student Union at Mass Science and Engineering High School at City College of New York. And whereas this legislative body is proud to acknowledge the significant milestones achieved throughout Kelly Hiles' education within the short period of time since entering this great country. And whereas so often such exemplary achievements go unrecognized and unrewarded, that it is incumbent upon the community to honor and recognize these unique accomplishments obtained by Kelly Hiles as a fine example of outstanding growth and educational achievements that are capable within the Empire State. And whereas Kelly Hiles' per perseverance is rising through adversity is a strong indication of her ability to master difficult tasks, her accomplishments will enable her to emerge as a leader fully equipped to meet the challenges of today's complex society. And whereas Kelly Hiles' plan major in biochemistry and neuroscience is a reflection of how she is a credit to her family, her school, her community, her state, and her nation, and no doubt her future will be filled with accomplishments of equal importance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pause its deliberations to recognize in recognition of the significance of these meritorious achievements to congratulate Kelly Hiles upon achieving an honor that is so rare and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to Kelly Hiles. Senator Comrie. Mr. President. I'm honored to rise this morning to speak on behalf of a remarkable young woman, Ms. Kelly Hiles, who is here um, upstairs in the chamber. Um, she has, as you heard, she's been accepted to all 21 schools that she applied for with full scholarships, she, all eight Ivy Leagues that were set, and she'll be attending Harvard University, where she'll be a freshman this fall and is uh, going to be studying biochemistry and neuroscience. Kelly is truly a model to her community, and no doubt that's why she's from the 14th Senatorial District. <laughs> <laughs> she has been an inspiration and, and a leader to so many people, even though she has just arrived from this country. She's a native of Guyana, and she came here in 2009. She dug deep into her studies and focused on doing the things necessary to make this wonderful achievement. Even before then, she was valedictorian at her junior high school at 192, and she's going to be the valedictorian of her high school college of her high school graduation uh, this June. Kelly is someone that has been truly been impressive to her community. She has been working to make sure that she brings other people along with her. Um, she has only done everything she can to show that she has an altruistic spirit of selfishness. Her educational achievements are a testament to her hardworking nature, proving that no matter what adverse obstacles stand in your way, success is possible through tireless dedication and commitment. We look forward to wishing all of your future, witnessing all of your future accomplishments that lay ahead of you. I know, Kelly, you're going to be the model of, of, of success, your faith, your passion, your determination, your focus, and making sure that People understand your story, people understand your passion, and people know that you're motivated to be a, a wonderful role model in this country is something that we wanted to bring you, a major reason why we wanted to bring you here to this chamber to celebrate you in the style of New York. And no, she's not related to Senator Fassad, but she's, <laughs> Senator Fassad is going to claim her in a minute. Um, but Kelly, I wanted to, to just bring you up to the chambers congratulate you on this level of accomplishment in your life. Wish you Godspeed in everything that you're planning on doing. Uh, I know that we'll be having many other op op occasions to celebrate your success, your achievement, and as you move into the uh, fields of biochemistry and neuroscience, I'm sure that you will be on the cusp of major discoveries that will help improve our world, save our people, and make our country a better place. So I want to just ask the President to extend it the, um, the, uh, the privileges of the House uh, to Ms. Kelly Hines Hiles for her achievements today, and hopefully that she will continue to be an inspiration to so many others. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Prasad. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. 
Uh, I'm not sure. My first issue was I'm not sure why Kelly took a step down from the 19th to the 14th. She lived in my district. Okay, so, um, but this is the second opportunity I'm having to celebrate Kelly's accomplishment. A few weeks ago, we honored her, and um, there's an organization called Guyanese Girls Rock. So anyone who doesn't know, we do rock. Uh, and Kelly was honored by them, and she was given their first educational award. Kelly and her mom took the trip from Guyana to come to the United States. There was the uncertainty of them leaving Guyana, coming here. There, Kelly was accustomed to, she had a very strong education foundation while she was in Guyana, and there were uncertainty. Her mother wanted her to come here to build on that educational foundation. She wanted a better education for her daughter. And so they came here. Kelly's mom worked 15 hours a day to ensure that Kelly had the very best. She wanted her daughter to have the very best in, the, in this country. So, and Annette, I commend you for what you've done for, for in ensuring that Kelly stayed on the right path. Kelly, your accomplishments are second to none. The Guyanese community, as you know, they've been celebrating you. They are very, very, very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. When Kelly, when her, it was announced in the newspaper that Kelly's, of Kelly's accomplishments, her former principal, her middle school principal, volunteers in my office. And he, he was all so excited. And he wanted us to ensure we reached out to Kelly. And he said, she's living in the district. And then it, it turned out that she had just moved from the district. Uh, again, I'm not sure why they wanted to do that. But Kelly, again, congratulations. We look forward to your, your future endeavors. Congratulations, congratulations, and continue to keep us proud. Continue flying the flags, both flags that you're currently flying, keep us, make us proud. Thank you, good luck. Senator Hamilton. I just want to commend Kelly House for your uh, very um, high academic achieve achievement. Uh, you set a new bar for people to follow. Uh, many times when you think of academic excellence, you don't think of young women of color. And now you're a beacon of hope to many young men and women in this city uh, who don't value education. I think education is important. Uh, in my background from Barbados, we have a 100% literacy rate. But Guyana is doing a great job in getting things done. And I, I just want to say, you're, you're, the new, you're the new breed of what we need in our community, in our city, in our state. I don't think, I think you're like in the top half of half of half of a percent of young people who are striving for academic excellence. And I just want to take my hat out to you to commend you, because I have a young daughter. And when I heard of your accomplishment, I told my daughter, Carla, you need to be just like Kelly. Focus on education. So for me, as a father, uh, you make me feel proud. And I want my daughter to be like yourself, uh, to get into every school she wants to get into, and to set a new standard. Uh, Harvard is the premier uh, college in the country. And to have a full scholarship there speaks volumes. And God bless your mother and your family, because it takes a family to raise a child in our community. So keep up the good work. Uh, we're here to support you, and you have a bright future ahead of you. God bless you. Take care. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise to congratulate Kelly and to certainly to congratulate um, Senator Comrie for bringing Kelly to our attention. Kelly, I have to say to you, I am a bragging grandmother. And I know what it feels like to have a young person, particularly a young woman, living in the household who really is very focused. And I was all excited because my granddaughter had applied to five colleges and got accepted at all of them. But she's still holding out for the law school that she wants. And, um, but when I go home tonight and tell her that, you, that you've succeeded in 21 colleges, I know that she's going to, she's going to say it's not fair because you have raised the bar way beyond anything that most people do achieve. But we're here to congratulate you and I just again thank um, Senator Comrie for helping us to recognize those young people in our districts that are doing so, so well because we hear too often about those that are not doing well and their ne'er-do-wells as a lot of people think. And so you make us very proud, and I don't know you personally, you don't have to, but I know that you're somewhere in the world and you are going to make your mark and make the world better. Thank you, Kelly. Senator DeFrancisco. 
Uh, Kelly, congratulations. Where are you? Why don't you stand up a moment so everybody can actually see you? Very good. I just wanted to congratulate you. Uh, you know, it's an amazing thing what hard work does. It's an amazing thing what having support from parents does and love from parents and a role model from parents. This state and this country could be so much better if we had that situation in more and more families. And uh, I'm just sad that you didn't uh, apply to Syracuse University. <laughs> Or Duke, you know, I'm really sad about that. But the one good thing about all these scholarships you were offered, there's another seven people that'll get scholarships when you pick yours. So you've opened the door for many other people. But seriously, congratulations. I, I, I'm as proud of you as the other senators who spoke. Thank you. Ms. Howells, the Senate congratulates you, extends to you the courtesies and privileges of the House. And while it might be debated in this room, I am quite confident in saying that you are the smartest person in this room. Congratulations. <laughs> Senator DeFrancisco. All of the uh, resolutions that we've uh, dealt with today, 3276 by Senator Amador, 4427 by me, 4878 by Senator Comrie, uh, would you please open them all up for uh, co-sponsorship? Resolutions will be open for co-sponsorship. If you do not you. wish to be a co-sponsor, please notify the desk. All right, now I'll tell you where the bank me banking meeting is. An immediate meeting of the Banks Committee is 124, and it's immediate. Immediate as opposed to immediately following session, as previously reported. It's, it's immediate. There will be an immediate meeting of the Banks Committee in room 124 of the Capitol. See, that's subject to interpretation as immediately following the session. Immediate, immediate. means immediate. Uh, flo uh, would you please, uh, is there any further business at the desk? There is no further business before the desk. That being the case, I move to adjourn until Monday, May 16, at 3 p.m., intervening days being legislative days. On motion, the Senate stands adjourned until Monday, May 16th at 3 p.m., intervening days being legislative days. Right.